Well, hello and welcome everyone to week two of Academy. It's time for another bit of Academy Rush. I'm, my name is Peshu Time. I'll be covering Dig Academy versus Team Liquid Academy. And this is quite the matchup. Uh, Team Liquid Academy, pretty exciting roster, very different from the rosters they've fielded in past years. It's almost all new players in a lot of cases on their side, including intended starting jungler Schoenfire, currently playing for the LCS team due to Broxa, that team's intended starter not being available. Mike Younger has had a decent start back in Academy and, of course, has been with the TL organization for quite a while, but the TLA 0-2 so far after one week. Dignitas, on the other hand, couldn't be any more different. 2-0 in style. I mean, a lot of people looked at this team and just thought, you know what, I've seen these players in LCS at least at some point throughout their careers. We've got Phoenix role swapped. We've got Acadian and Demonte back together playing mid, uh, mid and jungle. And they have really just been ripping through teams at breakneck pace. So curious to see how Dignitas can continue that form or if TLA with a week to kind of get things together, maybe build a little bit more playtime with Mike, can try and topple what looks to be right now the giant of Academy so far. And really fun way to start this one as well. You will notice Lolo is on set. A champion that we have yet to see has been enabled, of course. Was in this pack, but was not available last week. Now the period has passed where set is unable to be played. And that was the first pick actually in this draft for Dig. We can quickly recap that as the laning does kick off. On the Dick side, they were blue, banning J4, Syndra, Ophelios, MF, and LeBlanc. And then on the other side for Team Liquid Academy, Lucian, Elise, Akali, Gragas, and Rek'Sai. So some phase two control there of Akkadian, who has fallen to Olaf, which he had a game on last time in their stage win in week one. Cannon, of course, for Jenkins, always an option they want if they can take it, is the counter pick here to the set, who I think will have trouble getting in range of the Cannon. Cannon often pretty favored, at least in the early levels. 1v1 in the range versus melee matchups. And Phoenix, of course, freshly rolls up to AD. Uh, almost proud of him at some point. Has not played a mage or a mid laner uh, so far in three games now, including this one throughout Academy. So on center this time, MF was banned away by them. So I think respecting the potential power of tactical. But center Tom Kent was taken nice and early here for Dignitas. Ole, of course, very well known for this champion. So adding some Nice utility, and I'm kind of curious to see what the damage looks like. I mean, Rumble can do a lot, but is uh, generally a champion that wants to join teams and help with team fights. We'll see if uh, Demonte can roam out 1v1 against the victor of Yasui. And of course, Set uh, feels like much more of a bruiser, much more of a tanky style champion. So hard to say if uh, they'll have enough to kind of power through these fights as TLA. Do you have a really nice bit of team fighting here between the victor and the cannon, supplemented nicely by Varus and Nautilus with Lee Sin for good measure. As you can see, both junglers have started on their blue, but that does mean Akadian is down to the right-hand side of the map. Maybe looking bot lane here, gonna take a pretty quick crab. It's already level four, actually. So he has flown through the jungle on this Olaf. Demonte, on the other hand, trying to push Yasui in. Yasui defending, trading some blows back and forth, using that Q to get the shield to try and stave off some of the flame spitter damage, but CS being even is nice. Victor, I think, Without the upgraded hex core and that upgraded laser may struggle in the early levels, but Rumble has just been so powerful in the mid lane, especially. Got great mid game power with the ultimate. Really good when you're fighting around objectives, which of course with the changes with the two heralds and the elemental Drake system being different. I think all things to look for here as we do see Acadian back through. Does put a nice control ward down. We'll spot the deep ward that was placed by Jenkins, I can only assume. Do see the trinket on cooldown and he is pushed up in the lane, so a little bit of deduction. I think it makes sense that it was his ward, but well cleared there by Acadian. Maybe looking to keep the pressure on Lolo. Good base breaker. Gets the stun there, popping the grit as the W goes off for a bit of poke. But as you can see, Doran Shield, you know, being pretty responsible here in the 1v1. Keeping nice and close on CS, which is good, but just don't want. Don't want Kennen to just keep poking away at you. Lolo just going to clear what he can. Again, using those abilities to thin out the wave. And might even take a recall here. Going to pressure Jenkins in towards this turret. Jenkins might have enough. In fact, Dig, though, here. Early room from Demonte. Jenkins going to be forced away. Nice job just helping out Lolo in this matchup. Again, the early level's not looking so good. But actually, that's enough pressure to 
give Lolo a very slight CS lead. As a reaction, Mike Young will roam down to the bottom half, but over the wall he goes with the Blast Cone. Is spotted by the wards in that brush. And I'm guessing Dig did know about... Or TL did know about, excuse me. So we're going to keep it even. Have certainly seen uh, some different schools of thought on Senna. Senna, again, long range, good utility. Is that, that combination AD and support champion. And with something like Tom Kent in the back pocket, it does feel very safe. So I think Tactical may be thinking, you know what? I'm the experienced player here. He is one of the new swap overs to Team Liquid Academy. Had a very good split last year on TSM Academy. One of the scouting grounds pickups, I believe from the year previous in 2018. Maybe thinks he can kind of bring it to Phoenix 2v2. Again, is the player more experienced in the role despite Phoenix's pedigree? But so far, it's just a, about a wave ahead there for Tactical, so nothing major just yet. Mid lane again, Yasui fending off these consistent pushes from the Rumble, but has the upgrade now, should make wave clear and pushing back against this Rumble a bit easier. And this is a much slower start than we've seen from Dignitas. I think certainly expecting TL to play things a little little slowly. Jenkins again wants to try and grind out a lead if he can. Yasui wanting to farm up there on the Victor. Mike Young has been taking a fairly farm heavy route against the Olaf and it's looking pretty good as far as CS goes there. But again, no need to really push the issue too early and I think Dig feel the same. Again, set a champion we have not seen in Academy. This is one of his first games. Not sure how the other three games are going right now. Did see him in uh, LEC earlier this morning here in LA, but very curious to see how set shakes out. There's an early Drake from Olaf. That's something that you do have to be aware of. I think with the with the pressure there from Phoenix and Ole, just being very persistent in that lane. Did see Cal go back and grab some early Mobies, but Dig staying kind of sticky in the bottom lane does mean that a little bit of free time there for Acadian. Able to easily solo out that first Drake. That was something Olaf was very good at uh, before the first two Drakes got weaker. And of course now, with the rise of the elements, those Drakes are just a little bit easier to take as well. Next one will be a Cloud. So curious to see what Rift will get. I haven't seen an Ocean yet in games that I've cast. So I'm kind of excited for that. But Infernal, of course, always fun as well. I think both those souls pretty highly regarded. So should at least be fairly contested once that rolls around. Damonte, the kind of the other piece of pressure that allowed Acadian to find enough space to take that Drake. He's just consistently pushing. This is one of the reasons Rumble is so highly prized. I'm actually very surprised Rumble not only went unbanned, but was actually given over uh, last two picks for Dignitas. Rumble and Olaf were their last two picks after that phase two jungle ban pressure from TLA. Knew the center TK, wanted to take Devaris and I guess leave Yusui counterpick there in the mid lane, but Rumble just a, a very good blind pick champion, so interesting to see that one given over to Demonte. It's his third unique champion actually of the split so far. He did say on interview after their Monday game that uh, he's kind of on champ randomizer right now. One of the only players, at least in North America, to pull out Silas. But again, just been such a strong force here in Academy. I think for me, one of the coolest things about Demonte actually is that, I mean, not only is he, you know, native mid, fairly talented, I think he's still growing up towards that ceiling as we see Akadi and just full control of these buffs. TLA not challenging at all. Not even any vision for them to even know that was happening. So Akadi just swoops in and basically steals the Rift Herald out from under TLA. And again, the combination of he and Demonte, good friends. Demonte, a player that, you know, had a good showing at LCS, went to Worlds. Was not going to make it on a starting roster, it seemed like, much to the chagrin of the community. But, you know, said, I have an academy spot, I'm going to keep playing. He's done it before. One of the fun facts about the mid lane matchup is Yusui was the player that replaced Demonte on that Echo Fox Academy team. When Demonte was called up to play in LCS and had a spot. So these two have actually never played each other, despite being uh, pretty well known in Academy from last year, but never crossed paths until now. And Demonte, you know, from a pretty decent LCS mid laner, I think it's tough to exactly place how strong he was, but I think personally I'd put him pretty close to top half. Certainly not towards the bottom. But Demonte just comes back in and kind of like someday when he came down last split for 100 Thieves, just becomes the default best mid laner. 
But I think this teamwork is maybe what we'll have to look for in a second. First bit of action could be on the horizon. On top of the control world is Acadian. Cow is here ready with the ultimate. But Demonte, of course, first to the roam. That power of Rumble just able to shove, down, shove out those waves so swiftly. And looks like the dive will be called off. Mike Young knows that Ole is clearing that ward, but ganking this TK lane feels a bit tricky, even with two good ultis to throw into the mix. And with mid prio here, they're just going to shove the wave in and channel the Herald. Ooh, good attempt there from Yasui. Tried to cancel that off, but you get very little time now. It's about a second channel versus, I think, four it was last time. So much easier to just insta-drop the Herald and go for it. They will kill it, but the plate damage is done. Bit of extra gold there over to Dig. As Ole and Phoenix again roaming up first to that plate. Gonna help make sure the Scuttle Crab goes down. And I guess we just have to check in with CS at this point. Jenkins are uh, 10 or so ahead. Not bad, but I think maybe wanted a little bit extra out of this particular matchup. Have to say that that roam from Demonte and Acadian just to pressure Jenkins off the tower despite no kill. I think certainly helping Lolo out in that particular situation. But Protobelt already done for Jenkins as Lolo. Looks to play catch up on CS under the tower. Nice deep control word there from Jenkins. Who I don't think is going to be leaving top lane anytime soon. Do have the uh, jungle enchants completed on either side. That is Warrior for both. I think we'd expect that in this particular jungle matchup. And Yasui just sticking with one hex car upgrade here. Often see Victor's go straight for that. Maybe even just get two and then sit on that and go for a different item. But. At least for now, making a stop over at the Lost Chapter, wanting that extra mana. Again, you are competing with a resourceless, relentlessly pushing champion in Rumble, who already has the Mercs and the Leandri's finish. So I think Yasui, on this style of champion in particular, does know that he has to keep up in the push. Very different from the carries he was playing last split that certainly caught my attention. Far cry from the marksman he was playing. Corky, of course, very popular in that metagame, but... His Kaiser as well was very good. <laughs> Still just a lot of jostling here. Been a surprisingly quiet opening 12 and a half minutes. The first items are completed basically across the board. This could be a 4v2. They fancy good equalizer there. Cow looking low. They're going to be the first blood. No, he flashes out. But Acadian straight onto the priority target. Just slams down tactical as Cow goes into stasis. I think that's going to seal the deal. Demonte with a sniper harpoon. Able to get a second and Dignitas just walk forward down and just catch TLA unaware. I mean, I feel like Dignitas just kept doing the same movement so smoothly over and over and eventually something had to give power of Rumble once again. Insta Equalizer gets two kills. TLA just could not afford enough vision in the area. And they get the Drake. It will be the Ocean Rift this time around. Ocean Soul, very valuable. And with two Drakes in the pockets of Dignitas, you know they'll be looking to complete what actually is starting to be, dare I, dare I say it, a perfect game. Still early days for sure. But all the objectives, all of the kills have conceded no turrets just yet. There's going to be another Rift Herald in a couple of minutes. And with that Drake down, Tactical and Cow are going to move themselves up towards the top half of the map. This is a very common swap. We see the duos moving around to the top half to contest for a rift. In this case, it's going to be the later one here. Mike Young also up towards this side of the map, just clearing through his jungle. We do have Phoenix and Ole swapping mid, though. I kind of like this. Demonte can kind of go anywhere. Doesn't have TP, but he can push waves and roam pretty efficiently. Phoenix and Ole can potentially pressure in 2v1 and try and chip down that Rift heralded mid tower that they got plate gold from earlier. But it's just really no panic here for Dignitas. And I think this has been one of the, the biggest things to think about early on in Academy is that the teams that are coming out of the gate uh, fast with good results are not just teams with individual talent. Because Dignitas certainly lots of talented individual players here. But it's also the teams that I think are, are more experienced and more organized. I mean, FlyQuest Academy, you look at that team and those are names that maybe locally aren't that well known, but certainly the experience that someone like Triple coming from the OPL has, despite being new to this region, I think the most organized teams have looked the best. And that makes sense. Again, lots of changes in Academy, lots of rosters shifting around. 
So I think for someone like TLA, again, still waiting on that starting jungle, Mike Young, though, has certainly been a strong stand-in back again to help TLA in their time of need. I think the season will be different. These younger players, these new players that are just joining different rosters will look very different as the season goes on. But for now, that early experience of Dig, the veteran team, Mike Young with a flash kick back, Ragnarok late there for Acadian. Pull in there on the TK. Ole gonna look low. Tactical, tactical though does go down. Center ulti, not enough to save the teammates. Ole is over the wall and safe. But did have to burn the flash. And finally, TLA, the Caster Curse kicks in. They'll deny the perfect game. They'll actually take the Herald. This is how Kadian got caught. Went over the top with the Blast Cone, trying to sneak another objective. And just did not have the control. Is picked off at the TP in though from Dig. This will be Lolo joining in. Might be time for a showstopper. Dunks one in. Cow looking low. Face breakers, but I think he missed the connect. Lolo, they're able to take down Cow. Just pops the W. And gets a kill. Now Jenkins with a good ulti. Looking for a few stuns. Lolo, though, again pops the Haymaker. Back with the shield. And now Jenkins has to turn tail. Tactical low. Dignitas, a good TP. They don't get any kills. But they will retrieve. Potentially awkward situation. Not enough of note to make sure the Herald did not go over to the hands of TLA. It is Mike Young that has that one. So they are back on the map quickly with that TP from Lolo, and they should be able to take the first tower here, breaking mid, doing the rest of the work that the Rift Herald started for them about six or seven minutes ago. So a bit of extra gold still now over to Dignitas. A thousand gold or so ahead for them. But again, I think for the comp that TLA drafted, I think for the opponents that they're up against, they're probably okay with the pace of this game. Happy to lean on Jenkins Cannon, good in the sideline, better in team fights with the AP build. Tactical gonna feel comfortable here on the Varus, is working pretty quickly towards item number two. He's up about 15 CS on Phoenix. Gonna have the Raid Blade clocking in in a couple of minutes. Catch here on to Caldo. Ragnarok there means that Nautilus can't really do anything. He's gonna chase him down, Cal's dead. Demonte able to pick that one up, make it 2-0-2 for the Rumble. 100% KP. And still has the ulti ready to go. Up at level 11, Demonte. Again, this is just something that this comp is good at for Dig. When they have map control, so easy to find a pick. Center and Rumble doesn't sound like, and Olaf actually, doesn't sound like a, an overwhelming CC combination, but there's enough soft CC that you layer them together and it starts to feel like a hard CC. As Mike Young gonna channel the Rift here in mid. And TLA going to try and answer back to the tower of their own. This could be an equivalent exchange. Tower gets low, but doesn't go down. Phoenix in camo. Moving in. Tactical could be the target. Does have his flash, but doesn't have to use it. No CC landing that time. Skill shot not quite there as the Rift Herald almost finished off the tower itself. TLA going to have to go back for that one, but may have to put pause on that. As Ocean Drake, the third Drake total for Dig. The one that will put them on Soul Point is up and available. And this is a tough contest. TP coming in though from Jenkins. It's actually Cow coming back in, I think. But this could be a slaughter. It's good center ulti in the rumble. It's beautiful face breaker. Just gonna put an end to that fight instantly. A shot down there on the set. They're gonna chase down Jenkins. In fact, Demonte wants more. Doesn't have the flash, but he's gonna chase down. Tactical has got no flash. The rest of TLA will get away. Olaf will take the Drake for himself. And Dignitas just instantly starting that team fight. Phoenix able to slay Tactical as well. Just found the range. Collected enough souls to chase that Varus down. And from what was looking like, okay, this is maybe a position so you could navigate. Not in position to start that team fight. Dignitas absolutely were. And Rumble again. I cannot stress the power of this champion enough. When there's a lot more carries floating around, when there's a lot more utility from bottom lane, it doesn't feel like there's as many tanks. It doesn't feel like the hard engage is as present as it has been in previous metagames. Rumble's ability to start and end a fight feels very unlike most of the other champions currently floating around the pool. So 303 now for Demonte. He uh, just shorts himself on 100% KP. But Leandri's already done quickly working towards the Morellos with both the, both the Blasting One and the Oblivion Orb already complete. And I think starting to see how set works here. Very much a, you know, a damaging frontliner. I mean, kind of like Aatrox, I guess, in some senses. Certainly the champions function very differently. But as far as the spirit of what you want to accomplish 
with your bruisery somewhat tanky but also damage dealing top laner. And Lola with a really good use of just good positioning and face breaker there to find some CC to follow up on what Demonte had started. Power will fall in mid in the meantime. 3,000 gold up now for Dignitas as they built themselves a significantly stronger looking lead. TLA will have space to play with. It's actually two for two as far as tower trades go. Top tower down for Dig and bottom tower down for TL as both have lost the mid outer as well. But we won't have to wait too much longer for a big inflection point in this game. We've got two items now for Tactical. We've had two for Phoenix for a short while. I imagine Yusui is closing in on whatever his second item is in a moment and he actually has upgraded his hex core fully as well. Always a big point of power for Victor. But under three minutes, that fourth Drake, that ocean soul up and available for Dignitas. Kind of like breaking serve. It's tough when you're in this position because you have to win so many Drakes in a row. And as soon as the enemy team gets the soul, they have it forever. Ocean just... I mean, I think they're all quite powerful, but again, Ocean regarded as... One of the stronger ones available. And I think just wanting a pick here. Something for TL. I think the 5v5 is decent if they can get set up. But Dignitas have had superior vision in practically all engagements. Baron is, of course, up and available. It's still quite early for that one. Not too sure how the Olaf set rumble center Baron is going to look. It's probably fine. But I wouldn't call it fast. Because Acadian and Demonte... We're going to cleave down another turret. Mike Young and Yasui here. One level down here for Mike. Yasui already at 13, but just too scary. Can't see anything. Have the consistent threat of the Abyssal Voyage from Tom Kench and the center ulti also being global. With Lolo having TP, it's very easy for Dignitas to follow up here. And this is actually a function of set I do really like. I think 1v1 on a sideline, even if he can't kill you, it's really hard for you to push him out of lane. And I think functioning is, again, like a soft tank, a semi-tank. Just being a frontliner, doing damage, causing disruption in the front line. Set certainly can have functions here. And I do like all of, again, all this kind of soft or skill shot base CC from Dignitas building into some level of engage. It's really cool to see what kind of comps have been played with, again, the, the big heavy tanks apart from on really not being seen at all, but... Enough jibber jabber. It is 55 seconds now until the Ocean Drake is up and available. And again, that soul is ready. So I think TLA, this is your moment to try and pick a fight. Yasui has got the haunting guys. Good amount of uh, combat damage over uh, added as long as the fight goes a reasonable length. And given what the kind of fights Victor wants to have, should be able to proc that item. For the max value, relatively simply, looking for a pick again. This is nice from TL. Again, moving in early this time, getting the vision down. Okay, Dino insta sweeps that ward away. Lorda may be going to be caught. Ulti from Varus catches him. But don't want to follow up. The Sterex will proc, though. That shield will be lost for the potential upcoming fight. But Demonte is looking for a big flank with this equalizer. Root lands. Good W there from Phoenix. He's still forced to flash away. Cow in the front line. Demonte straight in the backside. Front side is going to be problems, but what a center ulti. Cal burnt down, tactical low. The shutdown is there from Taki, still alive somehow. But they lost the front liner in Jenkins. He didn't have his onis to try and proc. Dig flashing in under the turret to try and claim more kills. But again, it just seems that easy. Yes, a two for one trade. Yes, Lolo can't, get in, can't really get involved and does go down. That Rumble just starts a fight after a great W from Phoenix. And Mike Young is left to only steal this Drake. Had a heartbreaking steal against him in their game against TSMA. Phoenix so forced to flash out of the Chaos Storm. Maybe gonna buy some time. Mike Young, nowhere to go. Drake not there. Tried to find it with a resonating strike. But the Drake has been reset. Dignitas do not chase deeper into the jungle. They've got a nice control ward there on the left. But Mike Young may have found a spot in the shrubbery. Now they know where he is though. Drake is almost maximally pulled out. Doesn't have a ward to hop over. Drink it on cooldown, no control ward. Mike Young gonna clear this out, but I just don't think he can get in for a steal. Ocean Soul now for Dignitas. As TLA, I think, make the only counterplay they kind of have available. Feign towards Baron, either start it and rush it, or do this. Look for a cheeky pick or three. Due diligence done, hook lands in the front side. Good devour there from Ole. Lolo, so tanky with the shield. Shots up against the slow. Massive.
Massive face breaker wombo! And that's the shit sh set showstopper we all wanted. A quadra kill for the Olaf. And that's gonna be the Penta. Give it to the man. He deserves it. Damonte, I thought you were friends. Seals the Penta away from Acadian. But a clean ace for Dignitas will give them the Baron. Oh, that's the set stuff we wanted to see. Just a disgusting combination. May have cost him his life, but well worth it there for Lolo. And it's, again, a kind of surprising, surprisingly effective team fight comp here for Dignitas. As they'll wait for Lolo to respawn. I'll at least make sure he gets the Baron as well. I think it's responsible given that he is maybe one of the side, lan side laners, although his TP is not currently available. But Set's potentially first appearance in Academy. Again, have not checked the other games. But boy, oh boy. What an ulti there from Lolo. And again, I think TLA just, just too far behind in some of these fights. Tried to finally book one on their terms. I really appreciate what they did. I think it's the right move. You have to try and force them to come to you at Baron. And have to make a play, but... I think Jenkins maybe having a stopwatch could have helped, but he doesn't have his third item yet. Yasui having more items, Tactical having a third item. It's just the gold has kind of been left so far out of reach as the Ocean Soul and 8k up for Dignitas. They have to really lose a fight to kind of have significant damage caused, and it just doesn't seem like they they can lose 5v5s. Tower goes down in mid. Inhibitor towers are going to start to feel very threatened here, and Dignitas... Not even going to move just yet. They do have a good wave positioned on top side. They have another avenue to move over to if they want to pressure a separate lane. Baron up for a while, so all TLA can really do is just try and stem the bleeding. But again, these skill shots from Phoenix, just the poke here from center. Olaf Axe is being chucked in. No need for Dignitas to do anything hastily. As Damante will roam up to the top lane, get that wave pushing in, take the straightforward tier 2 turret that's been made available, and kick themselves up to almost 10k up. 27 and a half minutes, it really just felt like that. That one fight in this Baron may may well end the game here for Dig. Trying to corruption there again, trying to catch Ole, that's the one you want if you can get a Jenkins with the flank, but it's Phoenix, but the devour's there, Ole! Able to save him, and Set just took down Tactical in the back line as Mike Young able to find the trade. Finally, Lolo with the Steric Shield up, and TLA just don't have the resources to fight it. Jenkins burnt everything for the flank, but Dignitas come out four for one despite Phoenix falling. The Set, the Rumble, everything else was more than enough for Dig to crack mid. They'll take the inhib. Death time is about 15 seconds on tactical. 25 seconds for Yasui. Dignitas will not be slowing down. Onto the first Nexus turret they go. Jenkins just can't defend by himself. He's got no flash. He's got nothing. No hope. Nothing at all. Getting burnt alive to a crisp by Damonte, who claims another one on the scoreboard. Death loss at 6 0 and 9. Tactical just being burnt to pieces. And that's it. Dignitas will stay undefeated.